Oh, good evening. My name is Jack Leonard, and I would like to welcome you to the second in the lecture series associated with our spring semester Master of Landscape Architecture Interdisciplinary Studio, 100-Year Coastal Resilience Studio, Hampton, Virginia. I hope that you enjoyed our first guest lecture in the series, Ariana Sutton Greer, who presented Coast, Climate Change, and Natural Hybrid Infrastructure last week. If you missed Ariana's lecture or any future lectures, you can watch them on the School of Architecture and Planning YouTube channel. Our guest lecturer this evening is Dr. Yi Liu. This evening, his topic will be relative sea level rise and its projection. Dr. Liu is a professional geoscientist and an assistant professor in the Morgan State University School of Engineering with expertise in geotechnical engineering, hydrogeology, and land subsidence. His research focuses on issues of relative sea level rise and civic infrastructure, urban planning, and urban flooding. Dr. Liu received the Doctor of Engineering in Civil Engineering and the Master of Engineering and Bachelor of Engineering in Hydrogeology. Please welcome Dr. Li Liu. Oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jack. So, um, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Colin. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining uh, this lecture. Okay, so, uh, so today I'm going to uh, talk about the, the first part, the introduction to re relative sea rise and it is a projection. So then I'm going to uh, talk about the relative sea level rise and Multiple in the harbor environment. And the third part is the relative sea level rise, right? So the Gulf Eastern Pier 21 uh, takes us. So the, the parts uh, two and three uh, are my research results. Okay. So, first part, okay, introduction to relative sea level rise and its projection. So, <clears throat> And so, uh, you know, so our the, 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 the project is about the, uh, the, the 100 year uh, studio, right? So we're going to focus on the uh, Hampton community in the uh, Virginia. So uh, for the, uh, the civil rights of there, so we have the tight gauge. Uh, uh, so uh, in our, this is our uh, Chesapeake Bay area. So Hampton uh, is, uh, well, is somewhere, uh, let me say, it is, should be here, right? Right, For them, this picture is very well, right? So Hampton area is here. So actually there are 15 tide gauges here, okay? For us to observe the sea level, uh, sea level, okay? So then, the uh, close the tide gauge is this one. So several point. Okay, several point. Then you will see this this, this uh the tide gauge uh here. The picture shows this tide gauge. Okay. So they uh set the uh sensors the this pipe here, right? So uh the two pipes over there. Then this is the uh data log, data log here. So they uh, so this, this data log uh, connected the syllable data from the uh, site here, okay, at this point. Uh, so the picture shows uh, the the tide gauge at this side, right? So you you say mean uh, mean sea level is at uh, one point three six. Uh, the should be feet feet, right? Okay, should be feet. Then let, let, let's wait. Then this is the being a uh, high, uh, uh, high tide water level of, of the, okay. Then this is the mean lower low level water level. So maybe you can use this uh, picture to get some of the sea level data uh, here, okay. And so. Uh, at least tide gauge, they measured the uh, the uh, 
Oh, syllable from 1927. 1927. Okay, to carry. Okay, so this way. So the data is from the DOA. So you can get this data from the DOA uh, website. Okay, so they have the uh, the chain. They provide the chain the volume, 4.7 millimeter per year, okay, so uh, they, they sweat. And there are, there's a lot of uh, data is annual mean cellularized, cellularized data. Okay, so you will see, then uh, you'll also, you, you will see the, the this part is 4.7 uh, millimeter per year, the, the, chin, uh, the chin, okay. Uh, so, and the relative sea rise. Why we need to say the uh, this is the the sea level, right? So why we why we say measure the sea level from tide gauge is relative, okay? So you know this tide gauge is uh is built uh on the land. This is land, right? Your your land surface, okay? Then. Here is the, the soil and the rock, the, the, the very deep, right, so, rock. So the, it means this uh, tide gauge is established on the land surface. But if the land surface is moving up, right, or moving down, then the sea level, so uh, sea level also changing with the, uh, the land surface. So the reverence for the sale of data is the land surface, okay? So that's why we see the uh, the sea level measure from the tidal gauge is the combination of absolute sea level rise and the, the land subsidence, okay? So if we see the land, um, uh, Uplifting and the going up is is negative of land subsidence. We might say so. Some uh, scientists call the vertical land movement. They, they say, for me, you know, I my uh, interest is land subsidence. So actually, before I uh, came to uh, I'm working for my uh, doctoral uh, study uh, in two thousand. Too, I worked uh, in Shanghai for for more than ten years on land subsidence of the uh, because uh, you know land subsidence and uh, the the Shanghai is one of the biggest city in China. Uh, this city has a uh, uh, very big uh, land subsidence issue. So about the land subsidence of the ten uh, yeah more than ten feet yeah. So this way. Then during that time, the the, the famous uh, uh, scientist uh, on the subside simulation, uh, Dr. Han, uh, uh, you know, worked in Morgan, then I moved to Morgan for my doctoral uh, study. So this way. Okay, so uh, so let's uh, so we 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 have the sense about the relative syllable rise right now. Then global a uh, global sea rise. Okay, so the picture shows the global uh, uh, tidal gauges. Total tidal gauges between uh, twenty three sixty uh, tidal gauges of the world. Okay, then you will see uh, the 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 uh, so so the the uh, upward arrow shows that uh, the the sea level rise. The uh, downward mm, uh, arrow shows the uh, the the sea level uh, uh, sinking. Okay, so we we'll say then you will see uh, the the values like this value, the red value that like here. You the uh, this say yes. This is the shows the area somewhere the 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 audience, You know, above nine millimeter per year. Okay, so our the chest big area here. Is about three to six millimeter per year over there. Okay, so uh, and 
uh, you know, they, they, they start report here, global civil rights scenario also for, for the United States digital uh, climate assessment, 2012, so from Paris at all. So you will see, they showed this uh, uh, figure, okay? So this figure shows that from 1900 to 1992, okay? The global mean sea level rise is 1.7 1, 1. millimeter per year, okay? And they uh, projected uh, the sea level rise by 2100 uh, for four scenarios, the lower risk, intermediate, uh, intermediate, uh, intermediate low case, the intermediate high case, the highest uh, scenario, right? So for the highest scenarios, you will see the marked bomb projected the sea level rise from 1993 is about two meters. Okay, so they, 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 they So what uh, what it means? So for this highest uh, uh, what? So it means by the 2100, the ice of the nations on the earth will be um, melted away. Okay, completely. So, so this is the highest. Then the highest one you will see the global sea level rise acceleration value is about is zero point three one two millimeter per square year. Okay, from nineteen ninety uh, two. Okay, then this is the intermediate uh, case, intermediate uh, high case low. Case. So for the lowest case, it means the acceleration value is zero. Okay, so uh, this one. And the, uh, yeah, so what it is it? Um, yeah, this one, I want to say the silver rise in the um, uh, Chesapeake Bay area, okay, is uh, uh, three to six millimeter per year, okay. So then, uh, the sea level rise projection for Maryland, uh, 2018. So the 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 mark uh, the so actually the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science uh, uh, did this job. Okay, so uh, every five years they uh, pro project one time. So last time is they projected the silver rise uh, in 2013. Oh, so this one. Okay, so this is the updated uh, silver rise projection for Maryland. And the, so the uh, that picture shows the total US greenhouse gas emissions by uh, economic sector in 2018. Yeah, you know, so it means the uh, global warming uh, is the reason for the silver rise. So you will see the uh, greenhouse gas emissions, you know, uh, so much like this way. You can check the detail uh, from uh, from there. Okay, and actually the uh, the the this projection is based on the climate model for different uh, emissions, okay? So, so they, this way. Okay, like uh, the D, uh, DP6 uh, projection uh, here, so it is based on the K14, additionally, uh, including a physical model of process of um, Antarctic uh, ice shelf and hydrofracking, okay? So, so different uh, kind of model. Then uh, RCP4, the this model, so stabilize uh, emission, okay? So, and which uh, emissions stabilize around their current uh, levels slowly and they begin to decline after uh, 2050, okay? So, so this way, the, so that picture shows the silver rise projection by the uh, 2050. You will say the um, the Mount Bamu is more than uh, two feet, okay, of the.
And there are the, the picture shows the cellular projection by 20, uh, 2100, right? So you will say, you will say this uh, is the, the 8 uh, 14 model, right? And the stabilized uh, emissions are CP 4.4 or 4.5. You were the maximum uh, uh, cellularized projected uh, more than four feet. Okay, by 2100. Okay, so and the the picture shows the uh, like the uh, by the 2100 you will see this the range right. So from one uh one feet to the uh, 4.3 feet. Okay, so so if you are interested, you can check uh, their report. Then you can get some uh, projected uh. Future series, you know. Okay, so the, this shows uh, uh, the table shows here. Is, uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, twenty uh, written uh, uh, written the year tw twenty written year. Okay, chess. So one of so fifteen or uh, five percent uh, risk. Okay, so you will say the the projected uh, values here. This is 150 year uh, values. Okay, you can get them from that. So let's see uh, about uh, the introduction about the self, relative self rise and the, uh, the, the projection. Okay, then uh, second part, so relative self rise at the body more in the hub, Maryland. Okay, so I published the a conference paper about these results. Okay, so uh, so uh, in in the hub the telegraph is here, right? So let me see is here. The lovely is right. What's in DC? Okay, so it's this one. So this uh telegraph is in the hub here, right? So uh so the the low uh, the lowest observation data here, right? So they, they, they shows the uh trend three point two millimeter uh per year. Okay. Uh, so you you say they are global I talk about right global mean silver rise is one point seven uh millimeter per year. So this is almost uh, close to double this volume, right? So so you will see uh this what this is the gauge in the uh, in the hub. Okay, so uh, you 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 will say the this uh, model shows the uh, geology uh, geology in the Chesapeake Bay area, right? So this is the four line, right? No, it is it is here, right? So then you can see the the this land surface, right? Changing like this way, okay. So this is the Chesapeake Bay area. Then this layer is the uh, gun, um, compressed, gun consolidated uh, uh, soil, okay. Then this is the bedrock, okay, so bedrock. Then you, you can say they are, uh, in their model, the absolute silver rise, uh, you know, uh, is uh, if, uh, before 1992 is linear uh, model, right? Then after 1992, so it's a, a quadratic model uh, with acceleration falling in this way, right? So, so before 1992, so uh, the absolute silver rise uh, should be, uh, the trend should be a constant, okay? So this way. So absolute, the absolute silver rise is due to global warming. We are showing uh, we are showing the, this way. Then from the, this is uh, the gun consolidated layer. So you know uh, you know in this layer um, you know there are not four wells uh, you know uh, built into the layers of the. So they pump the groundwater from the layers. So due to the groundwater withdrawal, so this layer had. The, Compaction, okay. 
compaction. So they, this, so so they, this means the uh, subsidence due to groundwater withdrawal. Then this, there's another part about this one, right? It, there's uh, the creep consolidation. So it means if the 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 pressure uh, the open pressure doesn't change, but the there's uh, a natural compaction of the we say that is creep subsidence. There's another one you know you know you know this line right. So here is the basement rock. The basement rock uh, has the subsidence. So last time on the Mariana showed the uh, the, um, the GIE. Uh, so can they show uh, isostatic uh, uh, adjustment? Okay. So right now, I uh, in uh, this subsidence in is included the in the tectonic subsidence or basement rock subsidence. Okay, so so they they sweat. Uh, so we have we consider three parts of uh, subsidence in our bottom. So this part, so this the from the groundwater pumping, this natural creep creep subsidence, this tectonic uh, or bedrock subsidence, then plus the absolute severance. So that's uh, the model for us. Then you will see. Uh, this is a target in the, in the hub, right? So uh, this uh, uh, the uh, uh, groundwater level monitoring well here, okay? So USGS built it. So from this line to this way, then to this side to the UMPC, then we can make a, a geology profile like this way. So. You, you will see this is a microphone. Okay, this is a microphone, a creatures microphone. And this layer also is uh, uplift, uh, uplifted and out uh, cropped in this area. So because of this way, then the creep subsidence is zero. Okay, then the, the compact, the, this is the groundwater change from 1940, uh, five something, you know, ground level data. Okay, so uh, the 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 basement rock subsidence, uh, you know, is measured by this GPS uh, in, at the UMPC, you know, so it's one point five seven millimeter per year. Then the body move in the hub, the this is shows the uh sil the the silver rise. 2.68 millimeter uh, from 1962 to 1980. Okay, and uh, yeah, oh, later I, I talked about this. The, the this there is uh, out out uh, crop here. Okay, so I should this creep subside is this body is zero. Okay, so so here for this tight gauge, so. Absolute silver is we need to find it. Then the uh the subsidence due to groundwater withdrawal we need to find it. Another one is the tectonic subsidence we can find it from the body more than the GPS right your BC. Okay. So uh you 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 see from this picture show, uh, you will see some of uh the historical pumping wells. No. This point, not a point in this end. Okay, so uh, so the, this picture shows the groundwater um, uh, pumping rate, you know, from what from 19, uh, 1850. Okay, you will see. So uh, actually, the bottom is the area is the city to use the groundwater in the United States. You know, so this way they increases like this way to the multi volume. In around 1940, okay, then the groundwater pumping rate decreases at this way. Then after uh, 90, uh, 1982 or something, so then 
the uh, groundwater pumping was stopped. Okay, so then you will see the groundwater level here from 1962 uh, to here. He, uh, we can see there is a trend value of this. So they see so the trend value of the groundwater level uh, stable. Okay, so of this. Then you say, okay, so like here, right? Then this is the silverized rate, this value. Okay. Then we'll say this uh land subset is value 1.57. We assume this is a constant value. So this, so during this period, there's no subsets due to groundwater pumping. Okay. So this value is the combination of this value and the, the absolute silverized. Okay. So it means this value minus this value, we can get the absolute silverized here. It's 1.10 millimeter per year. So this is uh, the, the Okay, then we uh, found this one way. Uh, uh, I simulated the silver rice here with the piece uh, uh, wise linear uh, equations before 1992 and another uh, quadratic equation here. So that's the results. And uh, from these results here, the, this is uh, the acceleration are related values from this one. The absolute silver rise acceleration is 0 0.255 millimeter per square year. Then the maximum um, global silver rise acceleration value is 0 0.312 millimeter per year per square year. You can make uh, some difference uh, uh, comparison here. Okay. So each period we got the we, we, the this is an absolute silver rise. Okay. Then before 1992, there is no acceleration, right? Then bedrock subsidence, okay, value. Then uh each period we have the relative silver rise rate from here. Okay. Then we can find the uh, the creep subset is zero. Then we can find the uh, subset is uh, due to groundwater pumping for each period. Okay. Okay. So this one. Then, uh, so we have uh, the acceleration value is 2p value, 2p of uh, this value. Okay. So we. Um, a uh, lot of value, the this acceleration value. Okay. So that's uh, the uh, the uh, yeah. Then th this is uh, I got it the acceleration value from uh, the or uh, the absolute uh, silver rise before 1992 is 1.10 millimeter per year at the Galveston Pier 21. Okay. So you say our body more is 1.11, so almost the same, okay. So, so conclusion here, right? So uh, the uh, a uniform absolute silver rise rate of 1.11 millimeter uh, per year in Baltimore before 1992, okay? So let's follow. Then it is acceleration of 0 0.255 millimeter per square year. Okay, which is uh, eighty-two percent of IPCC AR four highest scenario, uh, zero point three one millimeter per square year since nineteen ninety two. Okay, that's our uh, ending one. Then the the accumulated non subject due to groundwater withdrawal was estimated to be twenty three millimeter, which accounts for eleven percent of the. Mm, total non subsidence of 204 millimeter from 1903 to 2018. So at least target is set for rows about 332 millimeter with non subsidence contribution up to 62 percent. 
from 1903 to 2018. So that's my results. But I didn't uh, project the silver rising uh, by 2100. I'm going to uh, do it uh, even later. Okay, so that's the, the second part. The third part is the relative silver rise at the Gulf East Pier 21, uh, Texas. So I published uh, these results uh, in the uh, Journal of Scientific uh, Reports. So it is a sub journal of uh, nature. Okay, so I just published it last year. Okay. So, you know, you know, last time Brian also uh, talked about the floods, okay, in the some coastal cities, especially in the like, uh, Annapolis, okay, over there. So actually, you know, uh, the floods by Harvey, right, uh, in 2017, right, uh, in the Houston area, right, Houston area. And, uh, you know, there's uh, um, uh, Hurricane Katrina, right? In the New Orleans, also is a big, big flood over there. Okay. So in uh, during this half uh, 2018, you know, in that area, the, the Navy and the Columbia Lakers has been uh, breached over there. I mean, uh, in 2019, I visited the site over there. So, the seed of rice I, and the land subsidence in Shoesley area have exacerbated the flooding in the Shoesley Gulf East region. So this way, um, uh, in 2018, you know, uh, USF, uh, you know, uh, released a solicitation. Uh, so then I will defer a proposal for funding. So uh, we, uh, we, we, we were awarded this project. So identification of urban flood impacts caused by land subsidence and silver rise for the Houston Gulf East region. Okay, so uh, this way. Uh, and the actually Houston, the maximum land subsidence in Houston Valley is, uh, is about 10 feet, okay. Then uh, this is a tidal gauge uh, here. So actually there are two tidal gauges uh, in the Gulf East in, uh, uh, over there. So this is the Gulf East Bay, right? So this is the, uh, the this, this is the Gulf East Island, right? So the, and they are, this is the um, Gulf of Mexico, right? So you will see this is the uh, Gulf East Pier 21. Gauge. This this is another tidal gauge. So the uh, this tidal gauge, uh, the data uh, oh, um, were broken very much. So we use uh, this one. This uh, one, the data is from 1904, right? So the, this <coughs> this is the tidal gauge equipment of the okay. So total to fifth. 115 years of suitable monitoring since 1904, okay, without break. So this is the NOAA uh, data, okay, for this location. And then this data for this location. So, you know, why we need to use the Gulf East 10 P21 data here. So from this uh, figure, you will see the, uh, the trend, six point four nine millimeter per year. Yeah. Right? We're talking about the global mean silver rise is uh, 1.7 millimeter per year. Okay. Then you can see uh, how big it is. Okay. Um then so uh the, this is a uh, uh, geological map in uh, the shoes guy then this is the uh, in Florida, right? So Along the coast, you see there are 20, total 22 tidal gauges, right? So the, the red triangle shows the tidal gauge, okay? Then the blue dots shows the GPS uh, locations, okay? 
then you will see the uh, um, the blue the blue college was here it is nine two okay so uh, here so this uh, this geology material is nine two okay nine two here okay so let I read the this do uh that subject is due to groundwater water pumping of the last side. Okay. Then on the shoes on the side, the, the, uh, this quaternary uh, party. So this uh, check called aquifer here. So they pump the groundwater here and this uh, compaction of this thing. Okay. The, this, so this much. Uh, then the subject is due to groundwater pumping here. Okay. Then I hear this uh, college station here, GPS, uh, which matches the uh, uh, subject is due to the, uh, uh, for the, uh, uh, the basement rock. Okay. So, so this way. And also this side has the uh, creep subsidence. Okay. But this side, because this day, uh, you know, uh, here is outcropped, okay, like the, uh, the rock in the body more in the heart. So there's no creep, okay. And they, they also measured the, uh, there are uh, 13 boroughs in this area to measure the compaction of the back of the system, okay. Of the so the creep subset is I uh, analyzed the the, the the compaction data from the is the summit. So each one has the creep subset is like this way. Okay, like this way. So that's why we assume this creep subset is in the uh, at the tight gauge coffee in pier twenty one. Okay, so that's uh with I talked about this, our relative silverized model, right? Absolutely silverized. Then the uh, bedrock uh, subsidence, okay? So uh, we, we consider the uh, creep of rock subsidence to, uh, for the um, basement rock, but it is very tiny. Then we ignore that part. Therefore, the com compressible, Aquifer system, so the uh, the subset due to groundwater withdrawal, then the creep subsidence. Okay, so the uh, this 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 shows the creep subsidence. Okay, so then we build the uh, build the uh, relative silverized model for the Gulf is P twenty one. So absolutely silverized before nineteen ninety two. This bedrock subsidence, uh, this is the creep subsidence uh, part, you know, also this parameter. Then this shows for the subsidence due to groundwater uh, pumping. This shows the, uh, the, the, the uh, absolute silverized due to the, uh, the, the uh, silverized acceleration, right? So this way. Then we, uh, uh, for the uh, absolute silverized before 1992, uh, we use the uh, tidal gauge here and GPS here, okay? So you will see, I take the theta here, I talked about this to uh, the uh, subset due to the groundwater pumping and creep, okay? So this way, so tectonical subsidence and the, the absolute silverize. From this point, we got the uh, tectonical subsidence in 0 0.88 per millimeter per year. Then, you know, we simulate this uh, data with a uh, quadratic uh, quadratic uh, model, right? So, so during this time, before 1992, the thing is 1.8. 98 for relative city price, okay? So this value here minus the tectonic subsidence, then we got the absolute city price. 
1.10 millimeter per year. Okay, they will assume, will assume the absolute silverance value is uniform in the uh, in the Gulf of Mexico area. So this way, they will usually uh, in the, in this the um, at the Gulf is the pier 21. Okay, uh, this way. And here with tectonic subsidence, we use this value. So this value is from the GPS uh, measurement, okay, the color station, okay. So this, this way. And uh, then you, you know, uh, this is our simulation, right? So before 1937, we say during that time, there's no uh, subsidence due to groundwater pumping from the, uh, the, the groundwater mud flow simulation results here before 1993. And the, then after 1983, okay, is here. There's a borehole is disseminated here, right? It's very close to here. So you will see from the uh, of the faces and the, the Simulation, so there's no uh, subset due to groundwater pumping after 1983 of there. So you will see this uh, trend and this trend is very close, no? almost 4.60 uh, millimeter per year. Then uh, during this period, you, you know, so uh, so big uh, relative severance rate, okay, because the uh, because of the groundwater pumping, right? So this way, then we, uh, our simulation, then found the results here, okay? So that's our uh, results. And uh, so from this uh, model, we found the, uh, this value for the creep, uh, creep, creep parameter in this value for each parameter. We found that this, this is a model constant. Okay, so this way. Uh, this for this one. Uh, okay. Uh, so for, for this period, we have, uh, you know, this value is about 0 0.87. The creep subset is read, read 0 0.87 to 0 0.83 millimeter per year. Okay, this. okay then. I use this uh, model to project the, the relative silver rise at 2100 from 19, uh, eight, uh, 2018. Okay. You, uh, then, uh, from here, then uh, this is uh, non this part. Okay, this way. Then you will see the maximum non subsidence contribution to relative silver rise is about. 85 percent should be 85 or 86. Okay, then you will see uh, the, the our relative silver rise to here by 2100. Okay, to here. So is uh, so here is 7.5 meter group, here is 9.6 meter. Uh, you know, so you uh, you here. Then we have the acceleration value is 0 0.27. This is the maximum, uh, IPCC maximum several acceleration value for this one. So this one. Okay. Then uh, some side is contribution uh, 20, uh, in 2018 is about uh, 30%. Then by 21, just 20, uh, 10%. Then you will see the uh, the the acceleration uh, uh, acceleration contributions uh, is up to uh, eighty percent. Okay, so this, then we can have a conclusion here. So uh, we find a uniform absolute silver rise rate of one point ten millimeter per year in Gulf of Mexico before nineteen ninety two. Okay. And it is acceleration of 0 0.27 millimeter per square year, uh, which is 87% of the value, 0 0.312 millimeter per square year, the highest of the 
of global mean sea level rise since 1992. So at least in the gauge, we found the non rate of 3.54 millimeter per year from 1909 to 1937, 6.08 millimeters per year during 1937 to 1983, 3.50 millimeters per year since 1983, respectively. At this time, considerable has uh, risen about 0.7 meter with land subsidence contribution up to 80. Five percent since 1909, and is projected to rise another 1.9 meter by 2100, with global warming contribution up to 90 percent. Okay, that's our conclusion here. So, uh, so this our is project and project leaders, Dr. Jiangli, our department chair, uh, this me and my collaborator Nick Fang, in the uh, the University of Texas at the Arlington, the, my collaborators here, and the, my uh, the student uh, workers, okay, here. So you come, my same my reverence, okay. So that's it. Thank you. So. Okay, do we have any questions? Thank you for the great presentation. Oh, y'all come and thank you. That was a tremendous amount of good information. I'm still trying to absorb it all. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So if you do have a question, you can go ahead and type it in the chat or I'm gonna um, let everybody be able to unmute themselves now. Um, so you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask the question if you'd like. Oh, okay, we have our first question. Are there things we can be doing as designers who work with landscape to reduce the impacts of land subsidence due to groundwater pumping? Uh, let me see. Yeah, so for your design, if you consider one uh, elevation, land elevation for your uh, uh, design, then, yeah, then if you got the, uh, uh, the projected uh, land subsidence, for example, by uh, 2100, uh, let, let's say if we use uh, uh, six, six feet. Maybe you need to, uh, you know, uh, for your uh, uh, preface design, the elevation value, that one. Then maybe you need to add the land elevation. For example, your design that elevation is 30 feet. Then maybe your uh, elevation should be uh, and just it to be uh, 36 feet for your elevation. So that's uh, my thought. Well, who built? Oh, you built. Oh, I am, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so our next question, would increased groundwater recharge through green infrastructure for stormwater management mitigate or slow the rate of subsidence? Sorry. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. If you increase groundwater recharge, uh, definitely, you know, it will uh, mitigate the land subsidence. Actually, for example, you know, I talked about the guy, I am from Shanghai, right? Actually, Shanghai used the groundwater in, in, uh, injection to increase the groundwater level. Then uh, the observations over there also uh, found that the ground, uh, the, the, the land surface uh, rebounded uh, due to the groundwater recharge. So definitely. Thank you for, for a good question. Oh, uh, Shusling Irie, Shusling Irie also. Shusling Irie actually, they 
uh, they decrease the the uh, the groundwater pumping from uh, I think it's 1976. Then the groundwater also uh, you know uh, um, uh, but the groundwater level was be covered very very much. Then the the land subsidence subsidence rate or decreased it very very much. For example, during 19 uh, before nine before 1970, so the maximum land subsidence rate is about 40 millimeter per year, right? Uh, so this way then uh, due to uh, in the 1990s the rate uh, you know uh, you know uh, very very uh, was uh, the rate was decreased very very much so sometime also uh, the, the ground also uh, rebounded some you know I have some picture here let me show you let me show you. Uh, this one. Okay, so, hey, okay, uh, nice. Uh, with this one, you know, you see. So the, this is this is uh slope shows the uh bigger another uh, subject rate. Then you know, no the groundwater pumping was. Thick, Decrease the ground water level, move like this way. Then you see. Then the you know the the, the here you know so then some is uh, very very small. Then go to here then like this way. So definitely it. Then after that you know from about uh, two thousand you know so here it it means the uh that uh, the land we found. Uh, you know, equals to the creep subsidence during. Then it means from here, the, uh, the uh, from here, there is no uh, land subsidence due to groundwater pumping, you know, so this way. Then, but from 19, uh, uh, from 2000, you know, you will see the groundwater trend, uh, uh, you know, almost zero, but the land, Subside is still uh, still happens over there with a uh, new rate. So this is the grid subsidence. I found it. So this uh, not it. So the you know the, this uh, uh, grid subsidence is not related to groundwater pumping. So we can't control it. So this this is it. okay. Thank you. Okay. So our next question is. Does saltwater intrusion have any effect on land subsidence? Uh, let's say, um, actually, in the, in the uh, Hampton Ivy, uh, they pumped the groundwater from uh, Port Mark uh, Aquifer. So, actually, they, uh, there is this, this, the uh, saltwater intrusion. So, uh, like this way, they also decreased uh, the groundwater pumping of there. So ground level, uh, I think the, uh, I forgot, it is from, oh, from uh, oh, 2011, uh, the groundwater level, uh, you know, uh, was recovered very, very much. Then the, mm, the, the subsidence due to groundwater withdrawal also uh, or decrease, decrease. Then maybe uh, it means maybe the salt, uh, salt, salt water intrusion maybe is not so big like uh, before um, 2011. So this way, I I don't think the salt salt water intrusion is a big issue or big effect on the subsidence. Thank you. Uh, we don't have any more questions in the chat right now. Does anybody want to go ahead and you know, ask their question themselves? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. They can, if a question, they can email to me or something. Right. 
No problem. I had another another question. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just the idea when we're looking at coastal communities and with subsidence being somewhat of a you know a fairly contributing factor to the sea level rise impacts, is it feasible to reverse that subsidence and somehow raise land, you know, from from underneath up, you know, geologically basically, to, to counteract some of that? I mean, is it possible to get you know, whether it's through groundwater recharge or or some other fact to actually get the ground to rise as part of a countering that process. Um, and I don't know if any studies have been done to look at what is it feasible and what would it take to do that? Uh, I see, yes. Um, you know, the groundwater recharge really is, uh, uh, is, is uh, feasible to uh, to mitigate or decrease the land subsidence rate. But, you know, uh, but if the groundwater level uh, can, can't be a reason uh, any longer by the ground, uh, groundwater recharge, then the, they, uh, there is no much effect or there's no much uh, mitigation on that subsidence from the groundwater recharge. So I think this method also is limited, okay? So this way we have to find another way to for the, uh, uh, for our uh, infrastructure in the community life. So that's why, so, you know, like uh, the, the, the deadland, right? So, you know, uh, deadland, the land elevation is, is, is lower than the mean sea level, right? But they build the, uh, the level system there uh, with uh, 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 average height uh, of 35 feet of them. So if, then we can consider our Hampton community area. The, the, the land elevation is, is about maybe uh, three to five, three to five feet, right? So this way. So the land, from my point, the, the land uh, did a very, very good job to protect their community, com community from the uh, silver rise. But in our Chesapeake, Bay Area, right? Like right now, you know, last time the uh, Mariana was talking about the floods in the um, uh, uh, Annapolis, right? So not for floods over there. So have the um, uh, community also uh, had this issue. So this way, so so the the, the uh, your design, I think, is is so important for um, to protect this computer, uh, community uh, from the civil rights in the future, especially for 100 years or more than that. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? Uh, Maura, and did you want to ask your question yourself? Or? Sure. Um, I was just curious about whether you see much of an effect on land subsidence from like whether natural features like living shorelines can accumulate elevation over time, either through acquiring more sediment or by other processes. And do you see any examples of natural features like this being able to keep up with sea level rise by gaining elevation on their own? Oh, you mean DC area? Mm hmm Oh, uh, yes, I, um, DC area, I think there's much, uh, there's no much groundwater pumping issue. So that area, I think, uh, you know, uh, the nature or uh, the, the uh, basement rock subsidence is 
one important factor for this area. And you know, like I talked about the, you know, the, in our Chesapeake Bay area, the, especially in the Baltimore area, the, the, uh, we, we, in this area, there's no much uh, quaternary com uh, compressible uh, sediments. So this way, the, you know, very, very thin. So we can ignore uh, this part of uh, uh, compaction. So, so actually this way, uh, the, the, the creep subsidence, we can ignore, right? So in this area, we uh, just need to consider the uh, basement rock subsidence or tectonic subsidence. Oh, like the uh, uh, GIE, you know, glacial isostatic adjustment, right? So this one. Then uh, absolute sediments, so two parts. So from my point of view. But in our, from my study right now, so in our Chesapeake Bay area, basement rock subsidence is not uniform. Okay, so spatially and uh, temporarily. Okay, so this, for for example, you know, uh, you uh, Ham at the uh, Hampton, the uh, the tide gauge, uh, uh several point, right? Uh, before 1940, the relative sea rise is very high. It's more than seven millimeter per year. Okay. So this way we couldn't uh, explain uh, it uh, using the the uniform uh, uh, basement rock subsidence at, uh, in this land. Uh, uh, you know, so so it means before 1940, the rock the basement rock subsidence is very high in the uh, around the uh, Hampton Island. So this way, but after 1940, then um, basement rock subsidence was decreased. Uh, uh, decreased. So they, they say. So but I, uh, and uh, also is now you should groundwater pumping was decreased from 2011. So the subsidence due to groundwater pumping also is changing. Uh, with time. So, so the subsidence issue around the, the, uh, the, the Hampton is, is complicated, not easy. So I'm still studying, maybe sometime later, I can give more, more results about it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, do we have any other questions? Um, I have a question. Um, I was reading about some um, marshes experiencing like a collapse of their um, their substrate, I guess maybe of their peat layer or something. Um, is that related to land subsidence? If you know any, if, if you know of that. Um... Oh, you mean the uh, Samo? Okay. Some shoreline, right? Like a swamp. Okay. So there's another kind of subtitles due to the, the carbon growing. Uh, uh, the, uh, the carbon growing will increase, uh, the, the, uh, will make the land rebound. Yeah. So there's way. But if, if the, the carbon, uh, you know, it is decreasing, then it will have the uh, and subsidence. And this, uh, I think, uh, I, I, I saw, uh, I uh, read some in literature, but uh, not much about this, uh, this issue. And, you know, along the shoreline, maybe, uh, you know, the, 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 the elevation also will be uh, decreased by erosion, maybe. Uh, erosion, this one is one uh, factor. But I, I didn't do some research about the, the two factors. 
Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Okay, next question. Okay, I'm not seeing anything in the chat, but you can go ahead and unmute yourselves as well if you want to. I think maybe everybody's like processing all of the information because there was a lot of it. <laughs> really good information. Thank you. Yeah, the one, it's not a question, but I think the point, one thing that Roy drove home to me here is the amount of impact that subsidence is having on this. I think we are so fixated on the, the true just level of water rise that we forget this cumulative effect of subsidence along with sea level rise creating a bigger problem than just the change in the water levels. And, and I think that's, so, that's a message that doesn't get out there because it's not as easy for people to understand. You know, they understand water going up, but the understanding, the thought of, of the land sinking at the same time and shifting and all this geological um, aspects uh, taking place, I think it's something that's that's really important. And I'm glad you brought that to my attention. And I think everybody else, you know, in the class, that that's something to address along with this issue of global warming, which is causing, you know, ice, you know, glacier melts and things like that. So I, I just want to thank you for bringing that down. Welcome. Oh, my pleasure. I, I'm happy to, to collaborate with you all together. Yeah. I enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. And what you, you, you may find that some of the students reach out to you over the next several weeks um, for information, you know, as they're developing their um, approaches to. Okay. You know, no problem. Uh, yeah, sure, I will uh, work with them. Okay, um, it looks like that's all of the questions for today. So thank you again for a wonderful presentation. Um, and hopefully everybody will join us next week um, for the next presentation, which is by Cindy Polankis. I hope I'm pronouncing her last name right. Uh, she's a geological oceanographer from the University of Maryland Center for Environmental Science. And that'll be at 5 p.m. I look forward to seeing everybody next week. And I would say watch the videos again on YouTube because the information takes a while to absorb everything that we're learning here. Yes, and the nice thing about the video is that you can pause it and take notes and then play it again, so. <laughs>